Friend and piercings, pros, cons, advantages, disadvantages. Going to give you five of them each. Coming up right now with pros and cons by a piercer, episode number 25. <laughs> For those that are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to you as an expert, as somebody that has performed this piercing a number of times over the years and help people heal through the process. Another thing I wanna cover before we get into this is we are going to be talking about a male genital piercing if you are easily offended when people describe the male anatomy or if you are under the age of 18 and this may not be appropriate for you to watch i would suggest you go elsewhere also if you're sitting next to somebody that's under a minor and they're watching this ask them to move on to the next video if you're looking for some type of sexual gratification from this video i you're going to be disappointed. This video is primarily designed to educate people that are thinking about getting this piercing or are the partner of someone that's thinking about getting this piercing so that they can have an educated decision on whether or not to do that and maybe have a discussion with their piercer when they go in. So if you're looking for something sexy, you're in the wrong spot, though I am very sexy, I think. Well, some people think anyway. For those that are new to piercing and don't know exactly what I'm talking about when I say a frenum piercing, a frenum piercing is a male genital piercing. It is done on the basic shaft of the penis. It can be done anywhere on the shaft of the penis through that loose skin. Traditionally, and the reason why it's called a frenum is it's named after the frenium or frenum te tendon or frenium tendon that is that holds the uh, basically snaps the. Uh, foreskin back into place. Uh, with someone who has been circumcised, sometimes that can still be there, um, kind of right in the middle, kind of buried under the skin. Traditionally, this piercing was initially done for people that actually were uncut and was done in behind that tendon and set underneath the foreskin, usually done with a ring. Since we all live in North America and, well, a majority of us do. Not everybody. Some of you guys are in Europe and Australia and all over the place. But because a lot of this was developed in the United States where circumcision is completely out of control, they tend to be placed below that area through what is left of the foreskin, that kind of ring of sensitive tissue. That was the traditional spot. However, they can be done in multiple places in multiple locations on the shaft depending on the person's anatomy and what they're you know what they would like to get out of the piercing and how it looks so let's get into the pros and cons that's why you're here right let's start out with the pros the advantages number one can increase sexual stimulation and create different experiences for yourself as in the wearer and their sexual partner this is not a 100% gonna happen deal. Everybody is different, and I have to tell you people, if you don't have it before you get the piercing, you definitely aren't gonna have it because you have the piercing. And 90% of sex is in your brain. This is your biggest sexual muscle. Keep that in mind. Number two, this piercing has a long history of healing with little or no issue and healing very rapidly. There's a lot of blood traffic in the body, uh, in this part of the body. It is not prone to infection. It's pretty rare that I see any problems with this piercing at all. Very easy heal. Number three, can be done anywhere basically on that shaft, as I mentioned earlier. Um, can also be done in groupings. A lot of people uh, will refer to this uh, particular piercing as part of a Jacob's Ladder. That's a pretty common kind of pop culture reference. Um, Jacob's Ladder is usually three or more, anywhere um, kind of in alignment, up or down the shaft. 
Uh, usually when somebody comes in and says they want that, I usually suggest doing three at a time because when we get past that third one, the inflammation starts coming in and it can make it difficult to keep those piercings straight. These piercings, like number four, piercings, especially genital piercings, are not going to be as painful as you think. This piercing, like all genital piercings, tend to be kind of a very intense, oh lordy, and then they mellow out very quickly. It's almost like, ouch, that quits, and then it's done. Uh, this isn't like um, ear piercing or upper ear cartilage or nipple piercings where you have that throbbing and aching immediately afterwards. This is kind of an ouchy kind of beginning and then nothing. So it's not, in my opinion, most genital piercings are not extremely painful piercings. I know we immediately want to cover that part of our anatomy and say, no, but they're not as bad as you think they are. Plus, your pain receptors are a lot different down there and they are your genitals are designed to have a lot of pain inflicted upon them. They're important parts of your existence. So, and they can take a lot of abuse. Number five, this is a piercing that if you don't want anybody to know that you have it, they don't have to know you have it. Um, if you work in a profession where you're worried about possibly uh, piercings affecting employment, this is a piercing that's easy to hide under clothing unless you actually tell somebody or you know show it off at work or what have you. They'll have no idea that you have this piercing. Now let's move on to the cons. Number one, cannot exchange bodily fluids for a minimum of six months. Now that doesn't mean you can't have sex for six months. That means you cannot have sex without some type of latex barrier. Uh, the reason for this is the piercing can be, even after it goes through that initial healing period, of roughly about three months or so, it can still be very, the tissue is very thin and it's very prone to tearing or being dislodged. So you have that situation and then you're exchanging bacteria with your partner and other microorganisms, et cetera, and you get an infection. Number two, kind of goes on the same kind of thing. You are more acceptable to STDs during um, intercourse, even after the piercing heals. Because the tissue is soft and you have metal in there, it can tear or cause slight tears. Then you have an exchange of viruses and you get an STD. So it's very important if you have genital piercings that you practice safe sex the way you're supposed to. In fact, I would suggest that all of you practice safe sex the way you're supposed to especially when switching partners. Number three, because this is usually done with barbells and barbells are prone to losing ends, you can lose ends in jewelry with this particular piercing. It's my experience that they usually, usually you discover when barbells are falling out of genitals is when you sit down on the toilet and the jewelry lands in the bottom of the bowl, and there's no way you're ever gonna put that back in your body again, or you'll be walking along at work or at a store or somewhere, and all of a sudden the jewelry falls out and starts rolling across the floor. This is a piercing that you do need to check the tightness of those balls on a regular basis for that specific reason. Number four, your partner may not find this piercing comfortable. They might find it uncomfortable. It might be a, metal, a mental issue with them. They might be worried the jewelry is going to somehow fall off or it's going to get caught on something. You need to walk into this situation knowing that occasionally, um, depending on who you're with, they may not like it. And you may have to remove the jewelry either during intercourse or completely abandon the piercing. Depends on the person. Personally, it's your body, do what you want with it as long as it's not harming someone else and stick with that. Last one, number five. This piercing will probably bleed anywhere from a couple days to five days. It varies from person to person. There's a lot of blood traffic in that part of your anatomy. Piercings, especially genital piercings, will bleed off and on for longer periods of time. With genital piercings, you have a lot more blood as I mentioned. So you are going to have to take precautions. That will probably involve um, some type of sanitary napkin, um, like pads, wearing them off and on for that first week or so, just to be on the safe side and don't have some embarrassing stains. Everybody got that? Now, I'm going to tell you, go through the consultation I would give you, 
If you came into my studio and you asked for this particular period of time, first thing I'm gonna tell you is his average healing time is roughly about six to eight weeks. However, especially if you're sexually active, I'm gonna suggest that you treat it like a healing period of time for three months, which means doing hot compresses or soaks, I prefer soaks with warm water and sea salt, or using some type of sterile saline solution on the piercing for about 10 minutes twice daily. That's twice daily, not four times, twice daily. It just wanted to join. This one wants to do what this one's doing. Twice daily. I don't know. Anyway. Um, also, cleaning in the shower using an antimicrobial or germicidal soap and immediately urinating afterwards. Cross-contamination prevention, common sense stuff. Wash your hands so you handle it. No, uh, no oral contact, exchanging of bodily fluids on near around the piercing for a minimum of six months. That doesn't mean you can't have sex for six months. That just means that you need to use some types of latex barrier, even if you've been with a partner for 20 years and you know you're both safe. We're not worried about STDs at this point. We're worried about exchanging bacteria and causing an infection. Also, uh, keep your environment clean. Clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with it, do not submerge the piercing in bodies of water you cannot control the quality of, which is everything but your own clean bathtub. Keep pets away from it. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you. They're just germ magnets. They're just going to drag everything into your... Yeah. Anyway, clothing-wise, I'm going to suggest that you wear kind of... Um, Something that's going to keep the piercing isolated. It's going to keep it from moving around a lot. Uh, personally, box, boxer briefs were probably the most comfortable when I've healed out um, genital piercings. I have used boxers too. You kind of have to experiment and see what works best for you. As far as getting the piercing and recovery, it's not a bad idea that if you have a three-day weekend to do this before the three-day weekend so that you have a few days to sit around the house and comfy pants or pajama bottoms or sweatpants and not have to deal with anything stressful. Everybody always asks whether or not this is going to affect how you walk. If you think about think about the location of these piercings, they are far above where your legs rub together. They are not going to cause issue. However, certain activities like bike riding or motorcycle riding or horseback riding or anything where that may come in contact with something hard and, and moving a lot, it's probably going to be uncomfortable. So I would advise against doing that sort of activity until the piercing has kind of gone through at least this initial tender phase. Now let's talk about the, the fun part, sex. Um, I generally suggest using large reservoir condoms, um, if you can find them. So if anything that has spermicide, any reactive agents of warming or sensation of any type, way, shape, or form, lubricant-wise, I suggest sticking with water-based. Um, silicone, I've mentioned this before, I haven't really done any research on it, on how it would affect piercings and what exactly would be going on there. Um, if somebody has or knows where there's an article about it, where somebody's done a little bit of research, please let me know. I'd like to know. I'm, I'm curious. Um, I have a curious mind. It's like somebody asked me the other day, why do you know so much? And I go, and I, I simply explain to them that one of my first words was why. <laughs> and it, I've never stopped asking. Yeah. Fun person to be around sometimes. Sometimes not so fun. Um, other than that, you do need to prepare for the bleeding. I do suggest uh, sanitary napkins or pads. Uh, not only do they cut down on the possibility of staining clothing and that embarrassment that may involve that, but it's also going to add a kind of a comfort zone to kind of isolate the piercing even further. Um, it cuts down the amount of moisture in the area, which cuts down the amount of bacteria when the piercing is probably the most acceptable to infection in those first couple days. The other thing you want to talk, talk about, um, and then I'll finish out with this, is jewelry-wise, um, they can be done with rings. It depends on the anatomy, and to be honest with you, if you're not doing the one that sets underneath the foreskin, you're going to be better off with barbells. The barbells need to be at least an eighth of an inch or larger than the piercing width um, because that part of the body tends to expand during certain activities. 
So you want that jewelry on the loose side, not only to allow for the swelling initially, but also to allow for the natural expansion of that said area. Other than that, I think that's pretty much all I can tell you today about frenum piercings as far as pros, cons, etc. If you find this helpful, um, please give us a thumbs up. If you feel like I've covered something, but you're not quite sure about it, or maybe I breezed over something, or maybe you need additional information on it, please leave a comment. If you have something, like maybe you have this piercing and you want to tell others about your experience with it, please leave a comment. If you disagree with me, please leave a comment. Other than that, uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. We post these, I well, I post these pros and cons by a piercer every Saturday. Um, hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of them. If you'd like to check out some of our merch, you can go to our merch store listed in the description. And uh, have a good day. Hope all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your piercing needs in the future.